Today, we're gonna to be comparing two digital scales. An analytical balance or a laboratory grade scale, which is roughly $500, and then the $50 Gemini scale. Both are gonna be linked in the description below this video. And so we're gonna be assessing just how accurate the Gemini scale is compared to the more costly analytical scale. If you've been around the community, you will know that a lot of people use the Gemini scale as a cheap way of doing cut and hold reductions. And so I'm gonna give you a little bit of context to compare the two different scales. So the analytical balance will go down to a 10th of a milligram and the Gemini scale just goes down to one milligram. So the analytical balance is 10 times as strong in picking up little variations in pill weight than the Gemini scale. So for instance, what this means is that the Gemini scale could say weigh a pill down to 301 milligrams, but the more precise analytical balance could go down to 301.4 milligrams. That's the main difference. And at the end of the video, I will provide an assessment of how I would use the Gemini scale if I was tapering. So here's how I ran the experiment. I set up both scales side by side according to their instruction manuals. And just before I go any further, I wanna have a little aside. When I'm talking about milligrams in this video, it's gonna be in regards to how much the actual tablet weighs, the entire tablet, not the weight of the active drug ingredient in the tablet. And so all the pills you're about to see that I'm gonna use are gonna be 10 milligram Lexapros. That's the drug strength, but you're gonna see that the tablets are all gonna be weighing approximately 129 milligrams. That's because the tablets are often bulked up with excipients to make them larger and easier to handle. So to start this experiment, I started by shaving down five different Lexapro tablets to within 0.3 milligrams of 129 milligrams, 128 milligrams, 127 milligrams, 126 milligrams, and 125 milligrams. I wanted there to be roughly a one milligram difference between them since one milligram is the lowest unit on the Gemini scale that it can differentiate by. I then recorded their weights on the analytical balance and then transferred the pills over to the Gemini scale to see how close they were. And here are the results. As you can see, the Gemini scale was fairly accurate compared to the analytical balance. And the highest difference I observed between what was shown on the analytical balance and the Gemini scale was about two milligrams. After this, I decided to extend this experiment. I got additional pill fragments that I had of Lexapro and I weighed several more on both scales just to see how close the numbers were if I ran this experiment six or seven times more. And here's what I got. Again, these results were fairly accurate, but this time there was one reading that was about three milligrams higher. So based on these results, my conclusion is that the Gemini scale is accurate to about two to three milligrams of the real weight of the pill. So what does this tell us about our limits? Well, it means that if you wanna be sure that you're consistently lowering your dose on the Gemini scale, you should probably aim to lower it by about five milligrams at a time. Now you could do up to six milligrams, but I feel like five is roughly good enough. This way it will ensure that when you make a drop, the difference in the weight of the pills prior to the drop and after the drop are sufficiently different that the new weights won't overlap. And so how would I use this Gemini scale? You would need to know how much your pills weigh. For instance, if you have a 300 milligram pill and you wanna do a 5% drop every 30 days, that would take you to 285 milligrams. However, you wouldn't need to do this drop all at once with the Gemini scale. You could do three five milligram drops spaced roughly 10 days apart. This would be kind of a crude, 10 day micro taper if you preferred. However, if you're working with a 100 milligram pill and you wanna do a 5% drop, that would take you to 95 milligrams. And you would wanna drop that whole weight at once because if you went any smaller than five milligrams, you'd likely have a lot of overweight in the pill weights from the prior drop to where you dropped to. So as you can see, this Gemini scale gets worse as the pills get smaller. For instance, say you were at 80 milligrams, because of the variance, you could potentially be having some pills being 83 milligrams and other being 77 milligrams. If you then drop to 75 milligrams, you did a five milligram reduction, you might have some tablets being 72 milligrams, which would mean that you could go from like an 83 milligram pill right before you drop all the way down to a 72 milligram pill in a day. And that's almost a 13% drop, probably larger than what you were hoping to do. 
And so what should you do? Before I give my recommendation, I first want to acknowledge that many people have successfully weaned off using the Gemini scale. And if it's working for you, I would just say go with it until it isn't. You may be healthy enough to absorb the natural variations in the pill weights. Also, you could do smaller drops than five milligrams, but you would just need to know that there's gonna be a lot of overlap, but that over time, you would just generally be trending down. However, based on this data and what I know about how people tolerate different size reductions, my recommendation is that below 80 milligrams, you should start to consider switching to a liquid or buying an analytical scale. Just to reiterate again, when I say 80 milligrams, I mean the weight of the entire pill and not just the dose of the active medication. To give you a sense of what different weights look like, here are two different pills. We have a 300 milligram pill and a 120 milligram pill next to some coins. Between an analytical balance and a liquid compound, my preference would be that you'd probably swap to a liquid compounded solution because it's faster and a lot less time consuming to taper with liquids. However, there is risk involved since you would be swapping drug forms. You're gonna go from a tablet to a liquid. And some people have reported difficulty when they swap between different drug forms, but the vast majority don't. If you prefer to stay with the same tablet, you could consider buying this analytical scale. However, I will say that they're a little tricky to use and they also require a fair amount of reading and setup to get them to perform reliably. I probably spent about three hours finding the right location and learning how to calibrate this scale to get it to perform accurately. So that's it for today. I hope you found this review of the Gemini scale useful. Please let me know what your experience has been with the Gemini scale or an analytical lab grade scale in the comments below.